dear lord, if you're not too busy giving the guys at McDonald's new sandwich ideas, I wanted to ask you something. McDonald's always seems to be on top of its game. However, when looking at more bizarre McDonald's menu items that disappeared, maybe that's not always the case. What am I gonna do? When I chose to be a girl, I thought it meant I'd get the better McDonald's toys. Orange High C. What do you want for McDonald's? Chicken nuggets, fries, and um, high C orange. McDonald's has said goodbye to a lot of menu items over the years, either because of poor sales or the sudden realization that an idea was bad. However, when it comes to Orange High C Lava Burst, it left the menu to make room for another drink, and its departure left a sudden void that needed to be filled. It's still considered one of the biggest biggest fast food heartbreaks of all time. High C Orange had a fruity flavor and was extremely popular, but the only downside was the scary amount of sugar it contained. In only one small 6.75 ounce cup, there is a whopping six teaspoons of sugar, which is more sugar than in a regular Coke. Would you like a Coca-Cola Zero Sugar? Never had one. What else haven't I tried? Orange High C was the drink of choice for every kid and adult pulling up to a McDonald's. That was until it got suddenly discontinued in 2017 to supposedly make room for Tropic Berry Sprite. For years, people have been longing for this nostalgia-fueled beverage to come back despite its obvious problematic health properties, even starting online petitions. Well, as of February 2021, prayers have been answered as McDonald's announced the return of the beloved drink in participating locations. Oh, thank God you're back! <laughs> Superhero burger. Not just any burger. Have you ever felt like one single burger from McDonald's could save your entire day? Well, in 1995, McD's released a burger that was rightfully named the Superhero Burger. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's the Superhero Burger. The burger had many aliases, depending on where you lived, like the Michael Dean Perry Burger if you were in Cleveland, or the Rory Sparrow Burger in Sacramento. It was also known as the Triple Double Burger because it contained all the regular burger fixings like lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and mayonnaise, along with three patties and two slices of cheese, yellow and white, served on a long superhero bun, whatever that means. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through This beast received a lot of hype prior to its release, mostly because it was coordinated with the release of Batman Forever. However, despite the promising sales expectations, it wasn't as successful as McDonald's had hoped. Sure, the burger gathered a small fan base, but it wasn't big enough to support its permanent place on the menu. Not a lot of people remember this movie tie-in item, but those who do mostly have strong feelings about the superhero burger. Who knows, maybe when the new Batman Man movie is released, McDee's will listen to its fans and bring it back. We need another one. Uh. Spanish omelet bagel. Sorry, sir, we stopped serving breakfast. What are you talking about? We're four seconds late. Not too long after it started, McDonald's stopped offering the all-day breakfast because, well, you know, 2020. People had waited so long to be able to eat an egg McMuffin at any hour of the day, and alas, that privilege was taken away. But even before this whole cancellation shenanigans happened, McDonald's had already begun its heartless slashing of breakfast items from its menu, and the Spanish omelet bagel was one of the unfortunate victims. Whisper dreams into omelet. McDonald's has always been a go-to destination for fast food breakfast, and in the early 2000s, McD's put their spin on a classic Spanish omelet bagel. With very simple ingredients, a bagel, ham, cheese, egg, and spices, it looked like it could have had a lot of success. Who doesn't like Spanish omelets anyway? Well, it turns out people didn't want to go to McDonald's to get an omelet of any kind, and the item eventually eventually faded due to its lack of popularity after a very short run. Since McDee's has discontinued the bagels because of the pandemic, the return of the Spanish omelet bagel is very unlikely, at least for now. But you never know what the future holds. Can it be? The Mick Jordan. We're going to see Michael Jordan! We're going to see Michael Jordan! The Travis Scott meal that was offered at McDonald's for a couple of weeks quickly became the talk of the town and basically took over the internet. It got so popular, McDonald's even ran out of ingredients and sold out in some locations. What a lot of people don't know, however, is that it wasn't the first time the Golden Arches named one of its meals after someone famous. 
About 30 years ago, another sandwich was named after a legend, this time a legend from the sports world. Legendary basketball player Michael Jordan endorsed the McJordan in 1992, and it became the first fast food sandwich to be named after a human being. Also known as the Big 33, this limited edition sandwich was a cheeseburger that featured all of Jordan's favorite ingredients. Good, I'm gonna need a good meal tonight smoked bacon, cheese, onions, mustard, pickles, and a tangy barbecue sauce. Only sold regionally, the McJordan was obviously very popular among Chicago Bulls fans, as Jordan's popularity hit a fever pitch in the early 90s, but also among regular folk who fell in love with the tasty barbecue sauce. So in love, in fact, that in 2012, an expired gallon-sized bottle of the sandwich's signature barbecue sauce sold at an eBay auction for over $10,000. It must be one heck of a delicious sauce if it went for that high of a price. Incredible. Salads. What's this stuff that looks like sand? Quinoa. Nope, I don't eat foods that sound like karate words. Let's start by clearing something up. Everybody knows that when you pull up at a McDonald's, it's not to order a healthy meal. It's the complete opposite, really. Everybody knows this, including McDonald's. And yet, they still tried to appeal to the more health-conscious people of this world and started selling salads. In theory, it wouldn't have been such a bad idea had it been done correctly. You know, if the salad had actually been healthy. Instead, they were the complete opposite of healthy. It might be a little hard to believe that something with such nutritious notoriety could be so far from its reputation, and yet McDonald's excelled in that department. McDonald's where you can get booze! Some salads contained more salt, more fat, and more calories than a Big Mac. Plus, forget the health aspects of salads. In July 2018, more than 500 people in 15 states got sick with cyclosoriasis, and some were hospitalized when an outbreak of foodborne illness was linked to the salads sold at McDonald's. Yikes. Despite this rather unfortunate incident, the salads stayed on the menu until 2020, when the chain had to downsize its menu because of the pandemic, wherein the salads got chopped. The moral of the story is this. There is no such thing as healthy fast food. There's only feel less guilty because it's green fast food. Salad, please? Um, baby feel greens? Chicken selects. Oh, hi. Get your own. Mm -mm. At McDonald's, aside from the french fries and Big Macs, the Chicken McNuggets are probably the most iconic and most popular item on the menu. First sold at the chain in the early 1980s, the Chicken McNuggets have come a long way and rightfully earned their place of honor. When McDonald's saw just how successful these little chicken delights were, they decided to take things further and try out a new, fancier version, the Chicken Selects. They were bigger and looked different, kind of like chicken tenders. There was just something about them that made Made you feel a little more grown up when you ordered them. Former Jess Kuthra Polly, from whose homeland these tasty dishes originate, one large order of Chicken McNuggets. Chicken selects were heavily advertised and were said to be made with premium quality 100% white chicken breast meat. At first, they seemed to do pretty well. After only two years, McD's had already sold an impressive amount of chicken selects, and it had become a highly celebrated menu item. However, as years passed and new items entered the game, the popularity of chicken selects started to die down a bit, with countless chicken strips going to waste, just sitting in the warming trays for hours. So in 2015, they were taken off the menu. Since then, they've been brought back for limited-time-only runs, but never stuck around for the long haul. I specifically bought enough food to last until January. How much emotional eating have I been doing? The Big and Tasty. That Tony hasn't received his weekly payment for keeping McDonald's and Burger King out of town. The ongoing animosity and competition between McDonald's and Burger King didn't start yesterday. The two chains have been competing against each other for what feels like ages. Back in 1997, McDonald's decided it was time to give Burger King a run for its money and go up against the Whopper with the Big and Tasty. Mm, I love this burger. It's so delicious. It featured a seasoned quarter-pound beef patty with regular burger fixings such as onions, pickles, lettuce, and the like. However, in this case, regular fixings also meant boring and already been seen before and didn't bring any new flavors to the market. It's not that the Big and Tasty wasn't, well, tasty. It just didn't have enough to differentiate it from the chain's other burger offerings, like the Big Mac, for instance. Its release also coincided with the opening 
of Disney's California Adventure, so it didn't have everything to do with the Whopper, but the resemblance was still pretty hard to ignore. It was pulled from the dollar menu in 2003 before it was finally discontinued in 2011. In a way, the Whopper was able to reclaim its title and the big and tasty fell into oblivion. The world of fast food just wasn't big enough for both of these burgers. King is king. Angus Third Pounders. You're wrong. And I'm a doctor, which means I'm always right. I'm gonna get a second opinion from my mouth. Again, McDonald's was trying to seem a little fancier and promote better quality menu items. The Angus Third Pounders was a line of burgers made with 100% juicy Angus beef and thicker slices of basically everything. This became the first menu item to offer full slices of bacon, and funnily enough, it was also the chain's first new burger since the Big and Tasty. Introduced nationally in July 2009, you could choose between the Angus Deluxe, the Bacon and Cheese, or the Mushroom and Swiss. Yeah, you have your own McDonald's? McD's tried really hard to advertise these burgers of having the best quality beef, and the Angus trend spread quickly to McDonald's worldwide. Despite its seemingly successful promotion, the burger line was dropped from the menu after a four-year run and a long deliberation. McDonald's claims this decision was the result of the ever-rising price of beef and the overall lack of consumer interest. It was still available at some McDonald's overseas, but most of them have since been cut for the time being in light of the pandemic. I'll take the Angus steak melt. Okay, this line is just for regular diners. You need to get in that line. The Son of Mac. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? When you go to McDonald's, it's hard to go wrong with a Big Mac. You can always count on the tastiness, famous sauce, and overall feeling of joy this one burger will bring. Some people argue that it's too big of a sandwich, others say that it's too small, but everyone can agree that it's delicious. For those who eat a Big Mac as an appetizer, this next item might appear outrageous to you. The Son of Mac, or the Mac Jr., was a smaller version of the Big Mac. A baby Big Mac, if you will. It was first introduced around 2007 and had all the same ingredients as a Big Mac. The only difference? It had one patty instead of two and no middle bun. What are you doing? Just making the best burger ever? Seriously? Seriously. The weird thing about this one was, why make it smaller and not bigger? It seems like the way to go is up, not down. You can get double Big Mac, triple Big Macs, and basically a Big Mac with as many patties as you want. But why would you want to get only one patty? Well, even though they're gone, you can still sort of get a Mac Jr. today, just not by name. All you have to do is order a regular cheeseburger and replace the ketchup and mustard with lettuce and Big Mac sauce, and voila. You're lucky we came here. I almost suggested Mickey D's. <laughs> That's so informal. Super size. Super size me! Okay, so we've already established that McDonald's menu is not the most healthy to begin with. It's no secret that eating a meal there is probably not the best idea if on a strict diet. But back in the day, there was a way to take things up a notch. Back then, for little extra cost, you had the option to upgrade your fries and drink to an extra large size, because apparently large was not large enough. However, following a rather disturbing documentary called Super Size Me that came out in 2004, the option was pulled for good. In the documentary, Morgan Spurlock wanted to try eating McDonald's food exclusively for 30 days straight to see the effects it would have on his mental and physical health. His only rules? Try at least everything once and always say yes when he was asked if he wanted to supersize his meals. Would you like to supersize it today? Oh, yes I would. After the 30 days were up, the effects on his health were concerning. He had gained over 24 and a half pounds, his liver turned to fat, and his cholesterol shot up 65 points. Obviously, it had an undeniable effect on consumers' perception of McDonald's as well. Shortly after, the chain removed the supersize option from the menu, citing health reasons and streamlined menu options. Well, health stores really make me feel unhealthy. Looking for more? Just tap or click another video. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.